Hey everyone, Houston Math Prep here for our video on definite integrals. So here, this expression here is called the definite integral of the function f of x. From a to b, it calculates the area between the function and the axis on that interval. So a here, we call this the lower bound of the integral, and b, we call this the upper bound of the integral. And this just simply tells us that we're finding the area between x equals a and x equals b between the function and the axis. If our function is above the axis, then our definite integral calculates the area as positive. So here you can imagine if the top of my rectangular region here was my function, then this region is above the axis, and since it's a rectangle, it's easy to tell that this is one unit tall and four units wide, and so our definite integral would calculate the area under this function from x equals zero to x equals four as four units. If our function f of x is below the x-axis, then it calculates the area as negative, so now my function is one unit below. I still have a rectangle that's four units wide, though. So still one times four for the area here. Our definite integral would say that this area is actually negative four between the function and the axis on the interval x equals zero to x equals four. If our function is above the axis for some of our interval and below for some of the interval, then the integral is going to calculate the net area of the function. It will find the positive area, and then it's going to subtract out for us anything that is negative area below the axis. So you can see in this picture, if this is my function here, this diagonal line, I actually have two regions. One of them is a triangular region below the axis, so this would be negative area. And this region above the axis would be positive area. Since these are both triangles, we can figure out the area using one-half base times height. So if my base is two here and my height is one, two times one would be two, and then half of that would be one. But since it's below the axis, this definite integral for our function from zero to two, from x equals zero here to x equals two where it hits the axis, that would actually be negative one. Looking over here, from x equals two to x equals six, that would be a base of four, and our height is two, so four times two would give us eight, and then half of that, because it's a triangle, would give us four. And since this triangle is above the axis, then our definite integral from two to six of f of x would actually give us positive four. If we wanted to figure out the net area, in other words, the definite integral from x equals zero to x equals six, that's going to take our positive area and subtract the amount of area below the axis, giving us a net area of three in this example. And so we would say the definite integral of f of x from zero to six is three. If we wanna calculate the total area between a function and the x-axis, we would need to add the absolute value of anything that is below the axis. So this region that is positive four, of course, is calculated as positive four, but this area is actually one unit. It's calculated as negative area. So if we want actually the total area of this, we would need to take the absolute value of anything below the axis to actually get a positive quantity of area of one there and then add anything above the axis. So we actually have a total area of five units here. For our definite integrals here, we have two properties that are the same as indefinite integrals when we looked at taking the antiderivative of something. So if we have two functions and we're adding or subtracting them, remember for indefinite integrals, we could just take the integral of the first function and add or subtract the integral of the second function when we did antiderivatives. So this property will be the same when we have definite integrals on some interval a to b. Remember also we had a constant multiple function. If you have a constant multiple of some function and you take the antiderivative of that, we were able to bump the constant multiple out and then just take the antiderivative of the function. We can do a similar thing with area and definite integrals where a constant multiple of a function basically is stretching that function that many times taller, and so it's going to have that multiple of area underneath its graph. Let's look at a couple of other properties that are unique to definite integrals. Looking at this statement, the definite integral of some function where our lower and our upper bound are the same x value, well, you can basically think of that as some region under the curve that we're trying to find the area of, but it has no width because the left side and the right side of the integral are actually the same x value. So this would have no area if we have the same bounds of integration for our function here. This property here says if I want to find the area from a all the way to b under some function, where I have my picture here, but we have some c in between a and b, 
then this total area is going to be the same as finding the area from A to C, and then finding the area from C to B, and adding them together. We'll give you one final property here for definite integrals that's just a little bit mysterious. We're going to tell you that the definite integral of a function from x equals a to x equals b is actually going to be the opposite sign of the definite integral for that function if we swap the order of the bounds. And this property will actually become clear coming up in our Fundamental Theorem of Calculus video. Let's take a look at a few example problems involving definite integrals. This first one, I know that the net area calculated for the function on the interval 0 to 4 is 6. This next one here says for the same function, the net area calculated between the function and the axis on the interval x equals 0 to x equals 2 is positive 1. And then we have a different function here, so I have a g of x, a different function. So its net area calculated between the function and the axis on the interval 0 to 4 is 9 units. And over here on the interval 2 to 4 for this function is 2 units. So we're asked what is the definite integral from x equals 0 to x equals 4 of f of x plus g of x? Well, we should be able to just use the property that I should be able to take the integral from 0 to 4 of my function f dx, and I should be able to just add to it the integral from 0 to 4 of g. And these definite integrals we already know. This one here is 6. And this second one here is 9. So we know then 6 plus 9 will give us a net area there of 15 units. If we look at this next one, we can do a similar thing. Then this is just simply going to be the integral from 0 to 4 of our function minus the definite integral from 0 to 4 of our other function. We know these, of course, already we wrote them down. This would be 6 minus 9. So, of course, we would get a net area of negative 3. This negative 3 tells us when we take f of x minus g of x, we actually get more area below the axis than we have above. Looking at the last one here, thinking if I stretch the function twice as tall, 2 times f of x, that's a constant multiple there, then that's going to be the same as factoring out our constant multiple 2 and just simply multiplying the definite integral that we would get for the function f of x on 0 to 4 interval, multiply that by 2, so we would just get 2 times our 6 here, and so that would give us 12, the idea that we have twice as much area under the function 2 times f of x as we do just the function f of x. Looking at our last two examples here, we want to know the definite integral of our function f here from x equals 2 to x equals 4. Now you'll notice here I know about the definite integral from 0 to 4, and I know about the definite integral from 0 to 2. So with these two things, think about what we know. So if I think about some picture that might represent our f of x here. So think about if this is at x equals 0, and this here is at x equals 4, and this is not necessarily drawn to scale, but hopefully you get the idea. So what do I know? I know that the total area for everything needs to add up to 6, and I know that the area between x equals 0 and x equals 2 is 1. So if the entire area from 0 to 4 needs to add to 6, what is this area over here? Well, this area needs to be 5, because now we have our definite integral from 0 to 4 giving us a total of 6 units. So then the question is, what is our definite integral from 2 to 4? Well, it's this stuff over here we know that's going to be 5. We can do a similar thing with g of x, so think about what's going on with g maybe. We have some sort of a similar situation. Let's say we have something like this, and so from 0 to 4, we know that that's a total amount of area of 9 net area, and between 2 and 4 we know that's 2, right? So imagine this here, not drawn to scale, right? So we know that the entire area from 0 to 4 should be 9, and I know the area between 2 and 4 is 2 units. So if this is 2 units of area here, how much area do I need here to make a total of 9 between 0 and 4? I would need 7 units. 7 plus 2 would give me 9. So from 0 to 2, we actually would have a definite integral value of 7. Hopefully this gives you the basics to start with your definite integrals. Thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you in the next video.